Em đi học tiếng Anh rất là dễ. Em thích và mong muốn được học tiếng Anh để uh, sau này đi uh, khắp nước và được kết thêm nhiều bạn. Vậy bất kỳ việc học môn gì cũng vậy thôi ạ. Bắt đầu từ sự đam mê nhưng mà dần dần thì cũng sẽ có những cái khó và cái dễ. Đầu tiên là với em thì em cảm giác là em thấy phần nói và phần nghe khá dễ. Nhưng mà vì em không kiên trì nên là em cảm thấy phần đọc rất là, rất là khó. Và đặc biệt là em không cẩn thận nên là phần ngữ pháp của em cũng khá là một vấn đề. Em thấy học cái gì cũng vậy thôi, dễ khó đi gì từng người. Nó dễ với người có đam mê, có mục đích để học và có cái uh, sự chăm chỉ để học tiếng Anh có chỗ khó là phát âm không phát âm được như thầy ạ. Còn học từ mới thì dễ hơn ạ. Học tiếng Anh rất là dễ bởi vì là những phần trọng âm với cả ngữ pháp với cả những cái bài trong kiểm tra đều là rất dễ nếu mà mình học chăm chỉ. Theo mình thấy thì học bất cứ một môn ngoại ngữ nào thì cũng có những uh, mặt khó và mặt dễ riêng nhưng mà uh, hồi trước thì mình học ở trường ấy thì thực ra là cũng học rất là nhiều môn nữa nên là thời gian dành cho không được nhiều. Hello, you're watching Sharing Vietnam and I'm Văn Hiệp in VTC10 Studio. Yes, in the beginning of our show today, we are trying to answer the questions, learning English easy or not? So many people at different age groups have different answers to these questions. Some young students may say, it's very easy to learn English and it's very interesting. But for the elders, it is, wow, learning English is very difficult for me, but I will try. I will try my best in order to learn English because of my work. So, what is the best way for Vietnamese students to learn English? We have invited here to our studio a senior English teacher from Apollo English Center to join our talk show to discuss about this topic. So now, let's say hello to Mr. Hamis from Apollo English Center. So hello, Mr. Hamis, and thank you very much for joining our show today. Hi. And uh, the first question for you is, I want to know how long have you been living in Vietnam? Uh, I've been in Vietnam for six months now. Mm -hmm. So, um, can you tell us about your work in Vietnam as an English teacher at Apollo? Uh, yes, I came to Apollo to work uh, as an English language teacher. Um, recently, I got a promotion to the position of senior teacher. And I've been working there the whole time I've been in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So, previously, did you work for other English centers? Uh, yes, I've worked in Korea for one year. I've spent some time working in Thailand and I worked in Japan for two years. So can you give us your answer to the question at the beginning of the talk show, that is, learning English easy or not? I think uh, learning English can be easy. There are certain things that help us to learn English. Uh, English is an international language and we have massive exposure to uh, English through television, through music, through the media. But obviously anyone who studied English will know our grammar can be very difficult. Reading English can be difficult, and we have a massive vocabulary which can be difficult. So I think um, there's advantages and disadvantages to learning English, uh, but here at Apollo we try and make it as easy as we can. So what courses or what kind of age group of students that are you teaching now? Uh, I teach many different ages. I teach the youngest children I teach are four years old, but I also teach many adults, so I teach a big mix. Mm -hmm. So which kind of group of students that you prefer to teach? Um, I think I enjoy teaching the young children the most. Um, I think anything from the age of four up to the age of ten is great fun to work with. Those children have a natural energy inside them. You know, they want to learn. They're not scared of speaking English and they try really hard in the classroom. And I think the energy of those young children makes me feel young. So mm -hmm. I really enjoy working with them. So what method do you use to have the children learn English at the early age so that they can learn better from you, from a native speaker? I, th I think there's uh, many, many important things about working with children. But I think the first is that you have to communicate with children on their level. You know, you have to look them in the eyes. You have to use gestures. You have to use simple language. You have to try and make it fun. You have to smile. You've got to try and help them to relax and to try and give them confidence to speak. I think these things are the most important and the first step. 
Mm -hmm. That sounds very interesting to me because uh, when I was small, I did not have chance to uh, study with foreigners. So now we would like to have the TV viewers to have a look at the following clip about Mr. Hamid's class. There is an English class for children at Apollo English Center on a Sunday morning. Hamid was playing fun games with his students so that children can improve their English skills. Learning and playing at the same time has brought the kids a new inspiration to learn the foreign language naturally. For these small children, it is not easy to acquire a new language, which requires teacher to understand children's psychology and deliver appropriate lectures to each as group. For children from age of 4 to 12, it is best to teach the children to learn through interactive activities. Therefore, Hamid was using a lot of games with intense interaction in his lesson. Through these activities, the children learn more and faster through the use of language with friends and teachers, which then helps the children use English in their real-life situation. Hello and welcome back. So Mr. Hamis, uh, we can see that in Vietnam nowadays, the, the Vietnamese people can communicate in English very well. So I can see that in Israeli, the Israeli people teach their kids English when they are just at the age of three. So can you tell us what is the important, what are the advantages of teaching English to the kids when they are just uh, small? Um, that's a very interesting question because I've worked with three-year-old children in Japan, in Korea, and now in Vietnam. And I think the biggest advantage you give children in learning language at this age is that they are very receptive to language. Young children hear language and use language. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to write things down or study. They are naturally able to just take language on board and use it. I think it helps enormously with pronunciation. Um, I teach some people who are my age, in their 30s, and they will try to pronounce English words again and again and again, and they can't, like me when I study Vietnamese. But for these young children, it's very easy. It's very, you know, they are in the developing stage, so they can develop the skills as naturally as a native speaker would, uh, and that gives them much more confidence in the future. They have a familiarity with foreign faces. They're used to interacting with foreign people. So when they become older, they have no fear or reservation about talking to foreigners. And actually, there are in, in Vietnam, there are many methods, there are many ways that the Vietnamese students can learn, for example, through the media or through the social yeah. networks. So how do you assess the importance or the development of teaching uh, English to students through the mass media or through the social networks? Um, I, I think it's very important. Um, when I look at some of my teenage classes, you know, students aged between 12 and 16, they're probably the students that use these uh, communicative tools the most. And they're also the best English speakers. You know, they don't just study English, but they watch English movies for fun. They listen to English music in their free time. And all of this helps familiarize them with English pronunciation. It broadens their English vocabulary. And they take what they learn from these movies and they come and use it in the classroom. And I think, you know, that definitely helps. Mm -hmm. Uh, so in the previous clip that we have seen, uh, that is about your class at the IPLOS English Center. Yes. So we can see that you apply interactive teaching method, for example, teaching students uh, through the songs. So can you tell us why did you choose this kind of method to teach the children? Oh, well, I think first of all, like we said before, one important part of teaching is making sure things are fun and enjoyable for students. And music is something that it's very easy to connect with. You know, I can listen to the music of Van My Hoong and enjoy it. Kids can listen to music in English and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I think learning uh, English through songs is a very good way for the kids mm -hmm. and because it creates a funny environment for them uh, to learn yes. and it's very effectively. So now we would like to invite you and uh, with the TV viewers to have a look at the following clip about the benefit of studying English through songs in Vietnam.
English songs was regarded as one of the best teaching methods for kids because music helps them learn English more easily and effectively. First of all, music helps the children remember what they have learned efficiently for a long time. According to Jiao Le, 1983, author of the book *Musical Mnemonics as an Aid to Retention with Normal and Learning Disabled Students*, when verbal information and melody are given at the same time, one could easily remember the information. Indeed, the tone of the music, along with its rhythm, was great to help children memorize information. Also, songs can help children focus on the form, format, and pattern and sentence structures. Từ khi em đi học thì em rất thích bài hát, bài bài hát cũng là bài hát của cha anh em với cả nhiều nhiều bài hát khác.、Um, em cũng rất thích những bài hát đó. Khi thầy dạy em bài hát của cha anh em thì em lại nhớ rất nhiều từ mới về cái việc hỏi tên bạn và trả lời thế nào về tiếng Anh. Another benefit from teaching English through songs is that it can reduce stress for children in the learning process. According to Krasen, learning and receiving language depends very much on children's inner feelings and attitudes. English songs create a relaxing environment in the classroom, which reduces stress for children and causes adverse effects in the learning process, and therefore promote learning process. Em rất thích học tiếng Anh. và em thích bài hát My Family、à, qua các bài hát thì bài hát đó là bài em thích nhất và vì bài hát đó rất sôi động và hay. Along with the factors mentioned above, English songs is also a rich source for children to learn foreign language. Songs lyrics express feelings, thoughts, and ideas of people, representing cultural values. If a song's content is appropriate to the kid's age, listening, speaking, reading, and writing skills can be well integrated in one lesson. So, Mr. Hamis, we can see that English songs can help the students learn English better. So, I mean that not every songs can be applied in teaching the students. So, can you tell us what are the criteria for selecting the songs to teach the children? Uh, first of all, we must take an appropriate song for an appropriate age group. So, for example, we're not going to teach kindergarten students Eminem. That's not going to happen. We look for language that is relevant to what they're studying at the time. Any song that can reinforce the language that we are trying to teach them,、uh, I think, is how we go about selecting it. Obviously, we like it to have a simple tune that the kids can connect with very quickly.、Um, but there, there are. An enormous amount of English songs out there directed towards children, and we actually use many of the songs that we learned when we were kids studying in England. So, for example, can you give some example of the song that you often teach at Vietnamese kids? Yeah, I, I use the song "Wheels on the Bus" quite a lot, which is a quite a simple、uh, English song.、Um, talks about people on a bus. It talks about different family members. And what they do, and you know, this helps familiarise them with certain language, like for example, bus, stand up, sit down, sleep. So there's many good language points in there for young students.、Mm -hmm. So with this kind of song, what、uh, knowledge can you help the student obtain?、Um, I, I think、um, songs are, are very good in a lesson because they break up the studying in a lesson. You know, if you can put a song on, children have a chance to stand up. They have a chance to relax, enjoy themselves, have a dance, but they're listening to English. So I think it improves their listening skills a great deal. We also sometimes use songs with reading activities. So, for example, we will have all the lyrics of the song written down, and we will play the song, and they will listen. But then we will stop the song, and they need to find the next word and say the next word. So it can be used to help with their listening and with their reading. And sometimes even with their singing. As we watch from the clip, the previous clip, we can see that you are trying to teach, trying very hard to teach the students. And so, how do you assess about the attitudes of the Vietnamese students when they learn English through the songs?、Um, I think the attitude of Vietnamese students generally is fantastic. I think they have lots of energy. I think they're loud. I think they're confident. I think they're willing to try. And I think that's the most important thing. So I very much enjoy working with Vietnamese students. 
Mm -hmm. So before coming to the end of our talk show today, do you have any final messages or advice that you would like to give to the, to the Vietnamese students who are watching uh, this channel? Um, I think the most important advice we can give to students is not to be afraid, not to be scared of making mistakes. You know, the most natural part of learning a language is making mistakes. And if we don't make mistakes, we will never improve. So I think just having the confidence to try is the most important thing. So thank you very much for your sharing. And we hope that you will have more success in your life and work here in Vietnam. Okay, thank you very much. And with that, we have to wrap up our program for today. And if you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to write to us at sharingvietnam at gmail.com. And once again, I'm Van Hiệp saying goodbye for now. Cảm ơn ông Hamid với cuộc trò chuyện hết sức thú vị vừa rồi. Còn bây giờ xin mời quý vị cùng quay trở lại với biên tập viên Khánh Long để cùng đến với câu chuyện hội nhập nhân ngày Thầy Thuốc Việt Nam. Cảm ơn biên tập viên Huệ Chi. Thưa quý vị và các bạn, nhân ngày Thầy Thuốc Việt Nam chúng ta sẽ ghé thăm ngành y tế Khánh Hòa với những thiết bị hiện đại đội ngũ y văn sĩ tay nghề cao. Trong thời gian qua, ngành y tế Khánh Hòa được đánh giá là có bước phát triển mạnh mẽ. Bên cạnh đó, Khánh Hòa còn đặc biệt chú trọng đến sự phát triển bền vững, việc xử lý các vấn đề môi trường, rác thải y tế được đánh giá là đạt chuẩn theo quy định của Bộ Y tế.